guys, it's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, we are doing some makeovers. I'm taking my friend Kathy's mom's estate finds that I kept and that I had vision to make over and share in the process with you all of what I did to these items. I've shared this before how to remove transfers or how to remove hand painted items on these type of crocs enamel wear this little sealed jug since it's hand painted it wasn't originally glazed over they are definitely able to be removed so i just do hot water dawn dish soap and yep let them soak for 10 15 minutes and then a scraping tool and usually it will come right off now if it's manufactured and they've glazed over it no it doesn't come off and if you want to change it you're going to have to paint it but i just always like to share this with you all if you think you see these out there thrifting that yes you can definitely get that off So yes, there's probably a little irony here as I'm taking items off of Crocs and thrifted items, I'm putting a transfer on this galvanized piece. Yep, just updating it is what I'm doing. So I think it's a beautiful piece. I love that it has a lid and I absolutely love this purplish blue of these IOD transfers. For all I'm gonna do to update this piece is to give it one of these transfers, size appropriate, rub it on, and it is a brand new piece. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of this Verithane Natural Clear Wax just over the transfer to make sure that it's sealed in there. We have this old wooden spool and this was definitely somebody's project piece, maybe a 4-H project. So it has been wood burned, which doesn't look to be too deep. So I'm just going to start off with hand sanding to see if some 220 sandpaper takes it off. But I quickly realized that some of them were a little bit deeper and I could see it a little bit more. So I switched over to just my mouse black deck sander to sand the rest of it off. And then I tried to make it as even as I could sanding it, yep, it's going to have a little bit different patina. There's just something about the way an item ages. But I am going to try to get a little bit of that patina back using some of the Verithane Clear Wax. I'm not going to mess with antiquing wax or anything like that because of the painted edge ends. I want to leave it as is and hopefully it will age again over time. But I do like it a little bit better without the wood burning on it. So now next up is this little metal plant stand and I actually get a lot of emails about pieces like this. So what I personally would do is just like what Chris is doing here is taking a sanding disc, trying to get a lot of that rust off, trying to make it so that it's nice and even again, and then get it cleaned really well, prime it with a primer, and then go ahead and repaint it black. Now it's all personal choice. You can just go ahead and repaint it and get a year, year or so out of it. But if you do it this way, you'll get many more years. I don't really have a lot of experience with outdoor sealers, but I do know sealing it in, at least with this polycrylic, um, is definitely going to help it one more step. When I talked about keeping pieces, I talked about because I could envision them right away. Once I touched it, I could envision what we could do to this. Now, taking a look at this little kid's office chair. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I definitely could see where we could take it apart and fix it up. So, yep, those flat head screws. Who, who created those? I don't know. But so with having two different, with a wood and a metal, it is nice to be able to take it apart. 
And so I know oh, you noticed all that rusty. Some items have rusty goodness, but this is just not one of those items that I consider to rusty goodness at all. So Chris, for the smaller pieces, is just using a vise to hold them so he can use that same sanding disc to sand it as smooth as he can. Now he's not, we're not restorers, we're just refinishers, repainters trying to salvage items. So he's not going to take it all the way down to the original metal. He's just going to make it so it's nice and even. I know that other people think that, oh, they have to take it all the way down to the bare metal to start all over again. And they st steer away from it when they see items like this at garage sales, estate sales, secondhand shopping. But definitely, it, it definitely is a feel thing. So what looks uneven now actually was I'm cleaning it is nice and smooth. So now he's going to go ahead and prime this piece also. And this is a rust pre prohibitor a primer. It's going to help just like that Rust-Oleum spray paint It all tries to work together to stop rust from happening but this maybe was a piece that sat outside got the weather so hopefully as we're remaking it the person that's going to buy it is going to leave it in the house so it'll have a little bit more longevity So see as this primer is all dry you can see really how the smooth is sometimes you have to go by feel and not by visual so yes now we're just going in with that rust-oleum paint and primer in the flat black And these covered so well, one coat was definitely plenty and now I'm sealing them in with some polycrylic. So now that we have the metal part, it's time to work on the wood part. And hopefully I can, I, I'm not terribly worried about the bottom, but I don't really want that pink showing through. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got some 80 grit sandpaper cause we gotta get that paint off. I gotta get the wear off. I wanna get the aged. I want the wood still to look sort of aged, but it's it's a little bit on the rough side. And then now I'm going to work on the top of the seat. Now, the seat is not flat. I don't know if it's showing in the video or not, but it definitely has that butt mark with your legs on it. So it's actually got the grooves where your legs and your booty would be sitting. So I definitely am trying to go very gingerly because I don't want to make this flat piece. I want to make sure that I'm keeping that character. As I was sitting on the back two pieces, you can definitely see the difference now. But that one piece had a stamp, so I was trying to really go gingerly over that because I did not want to get rid of that. So now because of the age of the seed and maybe being in the weather and wood dries and it just shrinks and splits. So it's actually not the wood pieces, the slats themselves, but where the pieces that were at one time glued together they are no longer glued together and it's not something tight bond glue would do anything for you're not going to pull those together so i absolutely love and you guys have heard me a hundred times recommend the star bond products now this is the dark black one so i'm going to treat this like an epoxy i tape the bottom off so it doesn't go all the way through and i'm just going to start building up so yes it's going to be a little bit different color but you're not going to have that crack showing so anywhere that there's major cracking going on on that yep yeah, there again I'm not gonna wood fill it I want to keep the character of this wood so I'm just gonna use this it's sort of like an epoxy but I definitely love this there's nothing you can do about that crack I don't want to wood fill it I want to accentuate it with this star bond black CA glue now after multiple layers of filling in that crack and I want it to be as I'm filling it I'm spraying the dryer on it that dries in like 15 seconds and so I keep just adding until I feel like I have it filled and a little bit raised so now I'm going to go in with the 80 grit sander again and going over all those spots that I filled in with that CA black glue. Now 
Now I definitely know that this wood is really dry, so I'm gonna start off with my watered down antiquing wax. This is gonna wet the wood, it's gonna control it. I love antiquing wax, but sometimes to me it's a little bit on the reddish side. So my watered down version is antiquing wax and a little bit of ink Waverly chalk paint. So it definitely has a little bit more of that aged barn wood look. So now I didn't end up using any of the straight antiquing wax. I loved how this dried, how it turned out. I love that it has that age. So I'm just going to go ahead and seal it in using polycrylic. After the polycrylic is dry, I'm just going to take a fine grit steel wool and just sand it so to the touch it's nice and smooth. Now it's time to, after that polycrylic is dried to get all our pieces put back together. And I don't know, I know that I sometimes I have to take some criticism for my black and white, but oh my goodness, look at that wood color with this black. And just remember, do what you love. You, If it's your vision, it's your vision, it's what you love. Don't do, do something because you think it's trendy, because somebody told you it was the in color. You have to do what you love. To put all your time and energy into something that you don't like doing, I can't even imagine it. I truly do love every piece that we refinish. So now that we have those out of the way, it's time for some of the smaller pieces, even though those are small little chairs. Oh my gosh, small things are just so cute. So I do, I did keep some of the metal boxes because I do have a lot of people also emailing me about what I would do with old file boxes. And I have done them in the past and they do sell, but I don't know, it's just fun to change it up. So I always am trying to make my videos a little bit different than the last video it just is i guess it's just how i am so definitely when it comes to metals you want to make sure that they are thoroughly clean now i kept the metal boxes one because this one had a key and you could use the key and that the insides were good that i didn't have to worry about finishing off the insides after getting these all cleaned up and making sure that they are good and dry, nope, it, paint will not attach to anything that has been wet. So I'm going in with rust -Oleum and paint and primer to pr paint these. Now I know that um, we have, I get a lot of comments about my spraying and how much paint I go through and how we have our set up. This is just learned, just being able to have that Lazy Susan, to be able to turn it constantly. I like a constant spray when I'm spraying and then overlapping my spray just by a wee bit and constantly moving that spray can so that it's not causing any drips or runs. You know, some people do the little squirts, but I find that for me that would cause drips and runs. And also I think that it actually helps the propellant that helps the spray paint come out, that it makes your can of spray paint last longer. I really don't go through as much spray paint as you would think. I like my base coat to dry overnight before moving on to paint it. Now, I have never found a spray can of white that... I like. <laughs> so plain and simply, I do love the white of my Kills paint and primer in the flat sheen. So that is what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be using my True Coat 360 handheld sprayer. I'm filling it up. You do add a wee bit of water to water it down so it comes out. But when it comes to mixing in the water, it's just a ratio of you stir it and then you add a little bit of water. And as you're stirring it and making sure that it's good and mixed, that when you lift up the paints, stir itself that it just blends in with like it's a water substance if that paint when you lift up that paint stir is laying on top of the paint then you don't have the right ratio quite yet so now i can put the top on i can open up my valve i can squeeze any of the air out of the bag and that is what's going to help it force up and then prime it a little bit and make sure that my flow is good and yes, I did want to leave the handle and the little locking mechanism black, so I took the time to tape that off. And I know that white paint is not going to cover in one coat. I stand a good position back from it, 
and then just go ahead and spray. Now it took me three coats to cover. I rather put thin coats on, let those dry completely in between to get that nice finish. So now I'm finishing up and sealing this paint in with some polycrylic. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the tape, do any cleanup around the black that I need to. And then as you see, it's easier for me just to paint the bottom of these, freshen that up with a coat of the Waverly Chalk ink paint and seal that in with some polycrylic then trying to go with three coats of white. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make some stencils using my Cricut. So I'm just going to, on the bigger box, do bulbs and seed. This can be a garden storage box. And then the little box reminds me of a recipe box. So I'm gonna go in with just a simple font for the bulbs and seeds. Making a stencil, I find that it's easier to do simple fonts that aren't don't have a ton of swirlies when it comes to all those little bitty pieces that you have to add in and now for the recipes i actually went to my search engine of my cricut design studio and found just a simple recipe but i like just the recipe and i don't need the background so i'm just going to ungroup that get rid of that background and then just size appropriate the recipe get these two cut out together I had to group them together then attach them together now for making a stencil I like to center it in the center of my page that way I have some leeway of being able to center but for today's I'm going to go ahead and cut this out on cardstock just a different way to show you how to do a stencil so now I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of spray adhesive to stick my stencil to my item And yes, this next part is a little bit tricky, so I spray a little bit of the spray adhesive on a paper plate, put those little pieces, dab them into that spray adhesive so they have a little bit of stick them on the back of them also. So this, is, like I said, is just a different way you can do it out on vinyl, but sometimes metals are funny with vinyl. If you're not heating up that vinyl, it will pull your paint off, so I thought this was a good opportunity to show doing it on cardstock and making one so that it's size appropriate. It's nice to buy stencils from Hobby Lobby and Walmart's areas, but sometimes, unfortunately, they're not the size that you need for the item that you are making. For my stencil color, I'm using one of the Jamie Ray Vintage stencil brushes, a very, 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 very dry brush. And then as you see, I'm still holding those little pieces. I got some trust issues. And I'm using Waverly Inks chalk paint only because I know if I have a mistake that I can wipe it off. So I didn't want to use any permanent black paint until I was positive that I had it the way I wanted it to be. My first attempt definitely was not perfect doing the stencil like this. I need, probably need to put a little bit more of the spray adhesive on my little bitty pieces or let them sit a little bit before attaching them. So I do have a little bit of cleanup to do, but I like to share I'm not perfect either. See, that's why I said I was going to use a paint that I knew that I could wipe off. Because usually my go-to is my apple barrel for stenciling, but I know that sometimes stencils can be funny. So, yep, I'm just going in with a wet Q-tip and wiping off that excess paint. And nobody wants to have to repaint a whole item to fix a stencil mistake. So as I do all, do this, hopefully I get a little bit better. Spray that spray adhesive on there. Really get the glue on to my little pieces so I don't have to worry about them shifting or moving on me. After I have it the way I like it, if I needed any cleanup to do or any touch up, and then I'm going to go ahead and seal it in with polycrylic. Along with this metal sign, yep, this is metal, but it has that paper over it. 
So this is also one of those items that I get asked questions about or people share pictures with me. So I do love to try to fit in items that I have been asked about. Now, as you see here, all I'm doing is taping off the back. There's nothing wrong with the back. There's no reason to waste paint painting the back and trying to change it up. It's just a basic brown. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape off those edges so that I don't have to worry about any overspray. This is something I have definitely learned over time when it comes to this type that has that paper. If you try to sand the paper off, it's really hard to get that all the way down. You get some paint underneath it, you get some paper, you get some paper left behind. It just doesn't paint well and it doesn't stencil well. But if I seal it in with a couple coats of shellac, that kind of fills in that paper, that porosity, and it will be good to go. So now that that shellac is dry, I'm going in and getting it sprayed in the same thing, the Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer, making sure that I'm just doing a nice steady flow of paint. After that dries, I'll seal it in with polycrylic and then go back in with the Kills paint. And as you see, I'm standing really far away to get this covered. For the three coats of paint are dry, I'm going to go ahead and remove that tape that I had put on the back and then take a little bit of sandpaper. There's always that hard, crusty edge where the paint has built up and just sand that smooth. Now, I definitely don't do a lot of signage on our channel. Even though I do have a Cricut, it is definitely a go-to. I probably use it more on my bread boxes. But yes, there's a lot of people, if you reviewed our Hog Creek antiquing tour that have signage so you know but anyway I definitely can envision this little metal sign just being a fun little gardening sign I think just a general simple nothing going uh, crazy just a nice little copy and use what they have on the this, their studio and then just size it appropriate to the piece that I'm putting it on so third time's a charm. Let's see if I learned from my other two <laughs> of doing the spray adhesive. So on this one, I'm just going to go ahead and tape that whole sheet down. That's got that paper underneath, so I don't want to use spray adhesive on the back of this. I'm just going to hold it in place using some masking tape. I definitely think my third attempt was my best attempt. <laughs> so, yep, I'm going to get this sprayed in with some polycrylic to seal that Waverly ink chalk paint in. And now this one I'm going to put a black wire hanger on so that it is able to hang. I'm not going to put the string back on because if you want to use this outside, the string, the jute will wear in time. Next up are these two canisters. Now I need to get them cleaned up. They both are going to be sprayed. I'm going to keep the insides as is so they continue to be food safe and I don't have to worry about any me painting it and any of it coming off. But I do need to get them clean, let them dry, get the bottoms in the inside taped off so when I go to spray it that I don't get any of the spray into that area. Now that we've got these all protected on the inside and they're clean and dry, I'm going in and getting them painted up. Now the black will be the paint color for the lids, but for the canisters themselves, this will be their underneath coat. And I get asked a lot, why do I always start off with black? One, as you see, it's covering up in one coat. It's got primer in it. We're not going to be able to see those flowers through there. And yes, and then if the paint does come off, 
for whatever reason, when you're distressing or you're waxing or what have you, it's the black that you see, not that original paint color. And yep, I have this little milk bottle that was in her stash also that I'm going to paint up with the same technique. And I find the undercoat of black really always richens whatever paint color I choose, it just richens and makes that paint color a little bit more vibrant. So now I'm going in with some polycrylic to seal this Rust-Oleum in. I really like the texture paint on canisters. It gives them that pottery type, that crockery type look. And as you see, I've got them on my Lazy Susan. I'm going to do the 50-50 ratio of baking soda with paint. Now I have elephant and I have steel and the steel is a little bit too light but the elephant is a little bit too dark so I'm going to mix my two paints 50-50 with my baking soda. I was mixing this up my steel was almost to the bottom so every time you open up a paint container you know it oxidizes it kind of thickens up so I'm just going to add a little bit of water to help out with that. Now, I believe in my last few thrift haul makeovers, I have shared with you guys a lot of canisters. They do really well, so I'm always trying to come up with a different color or a different way to embellish them. And then I'm like, oh, I needed to take my tape off so I can get that little edge <laughs> to make sure that that is covered. But yeah, so yep, I'm going in for some gray ones today, some cement looking gray. I get all the paint on there I do go back through and make sure that everything is nice and smooth I like to go in the one direction I like to work around the canister and then sometimes I am taking paint off because as you add baking soda I find that sometimes it puffs up So I do end up doing two coats, making sure that everything's covered. I don't add any more baking soda if I need more paint, but I actually mixed up plenty that I don't need to mix up anymore. After my second coat of paint is dry, I need to flip them over and work on any of the little details on the bottom, taking that tape off. There's always somehow that, I always talk about that spray paint, it can find a little bit of a gap and get underneath it. So I'm just gonna make sure that I've got this all nice and cleaned off and my paint line even as I can. So now that that's dry, I'm going in with some sandpaper and there's always a little bit of a rough edge where the paint has kind of built up. So all I'm doing is making sure that line around the top is clean and that there's not any excess where I don't need it. This would be the point that if I wanted to, I could do some white wax, I could do some antiquing wax, but I don't know if it's the mixing of the two colors together that I absolutely already love the color, so I'm gonna leave it as is and just now put some stencils on it. Now, these are some Waverly stencils that I picked up at a Walmart. So they are adhesive stencils, which I didn't know when I picked them up, but Hopefully they are reusable, but <laughs> we'll find out. So yep, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this grains number seven on the biggest canister, trying to just eyeball my center and then get it stuck. Now I did notice that it stuck okay to the textured paint, but I am gonna add a little bit of masking tape to make sure that it stays. And that I don't, when I'm going to brush on my paint, that I'm not going off the line of the stencil.
For the smaller one, I definitely think if I added the grain and the grain leaves to this that it would just be so overwhelming so i am just going to try to eyeball center again just that number seven with those little lines and yeah i'm not sure how <laughs> reusable this is it, it definitely didn't want to stick as well the second time but i'll just help it along with some masking tape wanted to tape off those other areas any, anyway, so I just had that number seven showing. As you see, yeah, it didn't really want to stick, so I just uh, definitely just kind of held it. So I know that this set came with a five cent and a cow and a milk, but I really like these, I, I'm going to call them quilt patterns. So I'm going to go ahead and use all three of these on this milk bottle. Sometimes it's nice to do the unexpected. These definitely did not want to stick on this textured paint. So back to masking tape I go. I did kind of measure from up from the bottom and between each one to get them centered onto this bottle. I have all my stencils on I'm gonna go ahead and seal the entire container the canister that milk bottle with polycrylic now we have this amazing frame I just love that detail on the top I just want to pop it just a little bit so I'm gonna go in with some antiquing wax just freshen up that dry wood that's going to give it a little bit of a drink and moisturize and hopefully and the details on the top of this is going to go into those cracks and kind of pop the details a little bit more <laughs> Now while that antiquing wax is still dried, it hadn't cured yet, I'm going in with some of that rub and buff, and this is black rub and buff. So I'm just gonna touch a little bit of those tips, the detail of these, this, oh, it's just so beautiful at, on the top, but I just want it to look a little bit more aged. And after I do that, then I'll go to on the outer edge of the entire frame. Just so happen to have a piece of mirror in our stash that came from another project that we didn't put the mirror back on so chris is going to cut down the mirror to fit into this frame that's just all i could envision no no fanciness here no wood no nothing like that just a nice mirror at one time this definitely had some kind of glass in it so chris is going to remove the wire that was used to hang it it's very aged i wouldn't want to trust it too much if we're going to put some heavy mirror in there and then i'm going through it still had some of the glazing points in it and along with these little pieces of wood that helped secure to keep whatever was in the frame to begin with and we're going to be removing those so we don't accidentally hit anything that's going to prevent the new mirror from going in breaking gonna go ahead and line up the one corner with the mirror and then take a sharpie on the other side to make his marks of where he needs to make a straight line to cut the mirror this is a glass cutting tool so he made his marks he's got a ruler and now he's just gonna go in and make a couple score lines to score the mirror I don't want just those glazing points to be on the back of the mirror, so he's cutting off a piece of cardboard to give it a little bit of cushion when putting it back into the frame. We'll replace the hanging system so that it's good and strong.
Now next is this frame. So this is that rounded top. So yeah, we're going for a mirror look again. But on this one, since it already has a glass and we don't have to cut glass to fit into that rounded top area, I am going to do an antiquing effect of a mirror effect on the glass. After getting the glazing points removed from that frame, getting the piece of glass nice and cleaned, I've just got some Rust-Oleum mirror, mirror effect, and then I have white vinegar and water mixture in a spray bottle, more water than vinegar. And so all I'm gonna do is just lightly make some droplets on the piece of glass, just randomly, no pattern needed, and then go ahead and spray the mirror effect on top of that. And then after I notice that it starts to dry, I can take, I just use a Kleenex, something without much of a print at all, t-shirt, old t-shirt works too, to take the water droplets off. And then you have that speckled effect of an aged mirror. And then I finish it up by spraying the black of it black to make it so even though it's speckled, you still have a reflection. I'm pretty sure this was not the original color of this frame. It definitely has a spray paint on it. So I'm just going to go in and try to highlight some of the beautiful flowers that are on it. And there's definitely some texture. So I'm going to go in with just this black rub and buff and just let it kind of give it that aged look. And there are there is some raw wood. I'm going to let it go ahead and blacken that right up. Then on the one side, you can see it's missing its flowers altogether. So I'm going to try to do the hot glue where I put hot glue over the one flowers that are there. And <laughs> yeah, we'll see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead with the hot glue, use it kind of as a mold by putting the hot glue over it, letting it dry, pulling the mold off. And then I'm going to use some wood filler in the mold when it's dry to have some replacement flowers. They're very delicate and not very thick, so a little bit of something will be better than nothing. So this is what it looks like. I think uh, this is my first attempt ever doing that. So at least, like I said, a little bit of something's better than nothing at all. So I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to seal it in with some shellac and then find what gold I have that might match. That my gold paint is drying i'm going to go ahead and work on this bottom you can tell that it used to have a piece of green felt i've sanded it smooth to the best that i can and now i'm just going in so with some waverly ink chalk paint you gotta love this high pigment black because one coat this should be covered and then after that's dry i'll just seal it in with some polycrylic unfortunately my gold did not match so i went back in i did a little bit of black of that rub and buff and now i'm going back in with some of the silver rub and buff and then a little bit of the antiquing wax just trying to give this a little bit more detail and i definitely think it's turning out more of a metal like Now can I save this little soup case now? It looks a lot worse for wear, but the bones are very good. So at first I started trying to scrape off what used to be some masking tape, but as you see, it's kind of just disintegrated and blended in with what material was already on there. So then I decided that I would just get my little mouse sander and start sanding everything smooth, taking off the excess paper where it would come off. They did write on the inside of this with pencil but it, it for the most part the inside is in good shape I'm gonna leave the pencil mark where it is but you do see that some of this has been dry and it's kind of pulling up so all I'm gonna do since all the pieces are there there's not any missing pieces I'm just gonna use some of the CA glue and some of the accelerator to dry it back into place and then leave good enough alone leave the inside the way it is 
I give the inside a good cleaning, which I knew that pencil mark was not going to come off. And I wasn't, since it's paper, I did not want to try an eraser on it. And then I think that would have been way more noticeable than the little pen, gray pencil lines. So just giving this inside a good cleaning along with the outside. As you could tell from the masking tape, this is really dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to even out the porosity by putting a couple coats of shellac. So when I go to paint it, I'll have a much even paint surface. And then so I've got some paper, I've got some binding, I've got cardboard, I've got wood. It all will paint up nicely. So now that my shellac is dry, I'm going to go in with Waverly Inks chalk paint. So I'm going to go in with a little brush, do around all the little handles, the little hardwares, the little latches on this and the hinges in the back. And we will get to those later. But for right now, I'm just going to paint the whole entire outside black. And now I need to seal that chalk paint in and I'm just going to use some polycrylic. Definitely can still see some texture of this piece. So I decided to use this Rocycle decoupage paper to cover this up. And I've used this on smaller little objects before. I definitely think this goes in with that soup case theme. So I'm going to try to keep a line on the side where the original side binding was, which was just some kind of tape so I'm just gonna do both sides just the front just cut off a square of this getting my two pieces cut it definitely still has a very strong fold mark so I'm just going to take an iron and some parchment paper and iron those out which kind of made it kind of rolly but I, I can work with that then I'm going to go ahead and mod podge it on so I'm going to I found my center point I'm lining up where that little line is I might because it as you glue it on the decoupage paper does stretch just a little bit so I'll take my crisp edge to the one side and the one that I cut if it's yeah I had to cut there's a center cut there so I will then trim that off after I get it glued on So now that that Mod Podge is dry, I'm going back in with the parchment paper, a no steam iron, and I'm just going to go back over it to make sure that there's not a ton of wrinkles. I never really mind wrinkles, but I also find that this flattens that out a little bit more and definitely makes it one with the item. So now for the hardware on this, I'm going to go ahead and use the, I think this is antique gold. They had a few different golds in the rub and buff, but I'm going to go ahead and see if this matches up.
Okay, so that's definitely not the same yellowy gold as what the wording is, and I plan on leaving the wording as is. So I'm going to go back in with some of the black rub and buff and see if I can tone this goldy down. Once you put that rub and buff on there, it is there to stay. Now I just need to seal my paper in with some more polycrylic. This frame is my last makeover and I absolutely love the frame. I didn't really want to paint it. It definitely has some details I can pop with just doing some light sanding and not having to paint it. So all I did is take this piece of runner that I had thrifted. It's burlap like, staple it in place, and then now I'm just cutting off the excess. To give that back that finished look, I'm just using a piece of the paper that we use to cover our tables in our workshop. And it just happens to this roll happen to have a pink tint to it, but just something to make that back look nice. Now I just printed these beautiful birds on this thrifted sheet music. I can link that video where I did that with some Easter bunnies if you want to see that and how to center that all to get it to print out. So I want to make it look a little bit aged. I think it fits this beautifully. That's why I picked out their burlap. The hardest part is getting to it to stick to the burlap. But other than that, um, yep, I'm just going to go in and tear some of the edges, give it that worn look, take a little bit of antiquing wax and some natural wax and give it a little bit more of an aged look. After a few different types of spray adhesive, Mod Podge, the Saran Wrap pack, nothing would stick to the burlap runner. And so I ended up using the hem tape that is made for fabrics and I finally got my birds to stick onto my burlap. Thank you for watching today's video. I am I still feel so blessed that Kathy allowed me to go through her mom's estate items supporting what we do here on Ginger Chick. And yes, so yep, there's two videos on it. I'll link them down below of so it's kind of some of these got combined together. So give me a quick comment down below what item I made over was your favorite? Did you have any visions? I know some people were sad on items that I did not keep, but you can't possibly keep it all you just have to i have to make the decision do i see vision do i not see vision and send it on its way and give it new life for somebody else to hopefully find so again thanks for watching today's video guys and as always if you're part of our youtube family thank you so much and if you're new and you're checking out this content and you like secondhand makeovers please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to bye